Hey everyone, my name is Perry, and in this video we're going to watch Dr. Stone Season 4, Episode 10 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this anime really are. Secret tunnel through the mountain to Zeno's house. You can dig far deeper underground than you can build skyscrapers tall while maintaining stability. Deep tunnels are a far safer place to be in an earthquake because quakes are surface waves. Modern tunnels are engineered with seismic forces in mind. They're built to flex and absorb the energy of the shaking ground, much like a well-crafted shock absorber. In a properly engineered tunnel, you might feel some vibrations, but you're generally safer downstairs versus anything above ground level. When you're deep underground, natural air circulation is limited, so mechanical ventilation is the hero that keeps everyone from feeling like they're trapped in a stuffy cave. In any construction zone, especially underground, a spark can quickly turn into a dangerous situation. Adequate oxygen levels paired with proper ventilation helps control the combustion and reduce the risk of fire hazards. I also just put this together. Taiju being the physically strong one. Taiju, Taijutsu, seems legit. That's pretty awesome. As this drill bit is gonna be spinning at just incredible speeds, it's like a tiny tornado just focused on that single spot. Pressure equals force over area. You don't need a high force as long as the area of contact is the size of a drill bit. Hand cranks will work just fine. For tougher materials such as concrete, some drills even add a hammering action. A rapid percussive thump that shatters the hard surface like a mini jackhammer. And they're aptly named hammer drills. The type of drill that Chrome designed is an impact driver. These are designed for high torque tasks, especially driving screws. They deliver a series of quick, powerful rotational bursts that make fastening a breeze. Finally, we have drill presses. These are stationary drills, precise and perfect for projects that demand exact straight holes every single time. I'm willing to bet that my favorite drill is also yours. You probably didn't know you had a favorite drill. This is not a sponsored video, but this is the greatest iced coffee I've had in my entire life. Shout out to Tess at Seven Sundays Coffee in Royal Oak, Michigan. This is amazing. This beast of a machine was essentially a massive rig with a humongous rotating bit powered by Fire Nation technology. Steam and combustion power with a dash of relentless determination. As it churned through stone and earth, it became a symbol of the Fire Nation's brute force and ingenuity. A true mechanical earthworm determined to tunnel its way through the outer wall of Ba Sing Se. There's no war in Ba Sing Se. But if Tess is working, you will have the best coffee of Ba Sing Se. I highly doubt that he's receiving that signal in that room. I'm not sure what the other parts of that wall look like just from the camera angle. If they're metal though, Gen is in a giant Faraday cage. He, he's not getting any signal with those. Any electromagnetic waves such as radio signals, Wi-Fi, or even lightning won't be able to make it inside. When electricity or radio waves hit the metal walls, they spread out over the surface, leaving the inside perfectly calm and shielded. As the external electric field presses against the cage, the electrons in the metal itself rearrange themselves on its outer surface. This redistribution creates an opposing electric field that exactly cancels the field inside of the cage. The clever part is that even if there's a break in the metal, like small gaps in mesh, for example, 
as long as those gaps are smaller than the wavelength of the incoming waves, they will not let the electromagnetic energy slip through. Named after the brilliant scientist Michael Faraday, who discovered that a conductive shell can protect its contents from external electric fields. This principle is why you're safe in a metal car during a lightning storm. The car's body acts as a Faraday cage, directing the lightning around the outside of the vehicle, keeping the inside safe for everyone. It has nothing to do with the rubber tires. It's Michael Faraday at work. Yeah, the, the engineering behind an aircraft carrier is a symphony of different disciplines. Structural engineering to ensure stability and strength against the forces of the ocean. Aerospace engineering for the systems that launch and recover aircrafts. Nuclear engineering, modern carriers are powered by nuclear reactors. Systems engineering, integrating countless subsystems, navigation, communication, power management, safety protocols. It's designed to be self-sufficient, so when it travels across the seas, it's ready to launch, recover, and maintain dozens of aircrafts. I'm not not sure how Senku went from being bedridden, blood in his lungs, to getting on this aircraft all within one episode. This look, this guy either has incredible inhuman recovery or, or I missed something. The flight deck is where the magic happens. To help aircrafts take off from the short runway, carriers use steam or electromagnetic catapults. These systems launch jets at breakneck speeds, propelling them into the sky using the slingshot of science. Once the mission is complete, landing jets use arresting wires, strong cables stretched across the deck that catch the aircraft's tail, slowing them down quickly to a safe stop. It's like catching a speeding bullet with a giant safety net. In essence, aircraft carriers are a testament to human ingenuity. Cutting edge technology meets old school naval tradition engineered to project power on the high seas. Combining the peak technology of the sea and the sky is wild, so shout out to these twins for setting us on course. Swiss-born twin brothers whose scientific innovations revolutionized both high-altitude aviation and deep-sea exploration. They studied physics and engineering together at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich. In 1931, one twin became the first man to reach the stratosphere, ascending 52,000 feet or 15,781 meters in a high-pressured capsule attached to a balloon. His flights were among the first to directly observe cosmic rays and study the upper atmosphere of our planet. After exploring the sky, he turned his attention to the ocean depths. He invented the bathyscaphe, a submersible that used buoyant gasoline tanks and a thick steel cabin to withstand extreme underwater pressure. In collaboration with his son, he made the Trieste for deeper underwater exploration. In 1960, his son piloted the vessel to the deepest part of the Mariana Trench, 10,911 meters or 35,797 feet. The other twin, more interested in ascension, developed automatic altitude control systems, making high altitude flights more stable and long lasting. His designs were continuously improved upon and are the basis for the SR-71 Blackbird. His innovations influenced rocketry and space flight becoming the hero for many NASA engineers and scientists to continue to explore space, the final frontier. Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, named Captain Jean-Luc Picard after the famous scientist twins, honoring their pioneering spirit and continuing their legacy. They are the brothers Jean and Auguste Picard. 